We want to thank you, everlasting Father. We appreciate you at such a time like this. Father, we come before your presence again. We demand that you will deposit a portion of eternity upon our lives. Father, we ask again that you will deliver to us what is needed to carry us through life. Father, we ask again that you will release inside us a portion of you. That portion that will keep us. That portion that will brood on us. That will help us to accomplish the tasks which you've given to us. Father, this morning we declare love for you. We ask that everything that is contending with it, O oh Lord, will be subdued. In the name of Jesus. Mr. Flesh has been subduing it. It has been contending with your love. Father, we ask that you will subdue it. You will take authority over flesh. You will take authority over things that has made itself high, lofty over our lives. Father, we ask that you will bring us low to the path, oh God, where you will increase in us. That everything about us will be about you. Lord, when mercy should be able to see thee. They should be able to interpret you, Lord, when they see us. Father, take away everything that has made us look different from who you are. Lord, we beg you once again until we look like you, Lord, we can be transformed to thee. May we carry the image and the likeness of Jesus. We beg once again. Lord, the likeness that we carry over the period had been the, the, the painting of sin. We ask once again that you erase everything that is found in us. And Lord, plant your image deep inside us help us to carry the nature of jesus that nature that you would deposit inside us that we draw us to thee thank you very much again lord we ask that you will speak to us may we not be disappointed again in the name of jesus thank you very much lord oh, in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen Praise the Lord. We're continuing in our team, Watchman, at such a time as this. Today, I want to consider another dimension. I want to begin by reinstating that there is nobody who understands what they're calling of watchman is all about who will argue the fact that it takes men of special quality to attain it if you understand what the calling of the watchman is you won't argue that fact that it takes men of quality and that quality is that special quality to attain to that over this period we've been analyzing the watchman at such a time like this. And if we understand what that watchman is, we know that for someone, for anyone to be a watchman, the person needs to be higher than others. So it, initially when we came to watchman, well, we were younger then. Came to watchman in 1993, We were younger. Now, when we're going through the Blessed Bible School, at one point, we we're told something, and I don't forget that. We we're told that it is a dangerous thing to be a Christian, and a more dangerous thing to be a watchman. I don't forget that word. That it's a dangerous thing to be a Christian, and more dangerous to be a watchman. And we notice that the ministry watchman is such that has faced some stiff opposition because of the calling that the ministry carry. If you analyze the calling of the ministry, being the fivefold end time, um, the fivefold vision, you discover that if we must accomplish all that is found in the fivefold end time, uh, uh, the fivefold vision, then we will first of all contend with spirits we contend with forces and then as I then discover that the fathers who laid the foundation contended with men and spirits so from that description of who a watchman is you now understand what the ministry watchman is all about 
So if that person is on the height, he will announce if there is a danger. So it is necessary that that man at that height, it is necessary for that person to be equipped at every given time in order to deliver the information that is at his own beck and call any time is necessary to give to the city or to the people there. If you remember the watchman that was at the very top, at the height, uh, in the days of David, when Cushi and Ahimaaz were running down, at first he saw a man running. He was able to interpret that running. He said he saw this man running. After describing that man and describing the way he's coming, the king said, well, he's a good man. He's bringing peace. Now, if the, 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 the person coming forward is coming with trouble or is an enemy, the watchman must first of all sound the trumpet, making the city to be prepared. Now, if it's an enemy that is coming, the first enemy we do is to kill that watchman. Just like saying when you're entering the man, a strong man's house, you first of all bind the strong man. You want to, thieves want to rob a house, they will first of all capture the gate man. So you discover that the job of the gate man is a risky job. And that's the job we are made to, to, to we are told that's the job of a watchman. Now the calling of that watchman is such so being watchman, we're made to understand that it is a more dangerous thing to be a watchman because the watchman is contending spirit. It has become unfortunate that not knowing that ministry of the watchman have made us so relaxed that even, even, even the enemy have so seen it that there are people carrying this vision do not understand it. It's like there is a misplaced priority. It's like there is a misplaced vision. There is a transfer of the original thing to a fake or a different thing altogether. And the work is lying latent. So, but we're made to understand that it takes men with special quality to attain to that height. So, being a watchman, we are supposed or it is expected that we have special qualities. And every man who is a Christian is having special qualities. There's a special thing about every person seated. Different from any other person. Our problem is discovering that special thing that is found in us. No wonder somebody said, a minister said, that the graveyard is where you get every gift, treasure, Quality is found in the graveyard. Why did he say so? He said in the graveyard, that's where you see ministers, presidents of nation, great men in the graveyard who never discovered why they were created or reason for their being created. He said in the graveyard, that's where you see books that were not written, but they are meant to be written to bless and affect lives. People who are meant to affect lives, who are meant to build lands, nations, but never knowing never know the reason for being created and they die. So that's why he said in the graveyard you see wealth of experience. Wealth is found there. So the ministry watchman is a special ministry so that it takes special quality to attain to that height. To attain to that ministry. That is why we're still going on today considering the qualities required of a watchman at such a time. Last Sunday, the consideration there is men of vision and men by whom the ministry must not be blamed. Today, we're considering another quality. And that quality is men of love, understanding, and compassion. The quality we're considering today being part of that special quality to attain to, the, the, to that ministry is men of love, understanding, and compassion. I plead with us, please don't sleep. I might, be, I might not be too hard. My statement might not be too noisy. Please don't sleep. Because that's the deceit of the enemy. At the midst of the moment, we begin to sleep. Or begin to move around. 
and missing the meat, the 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 the, the, the core ingredient of the of the meeting. So I plead with us, please don't sleep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To think of fulfilling our great fivefold ministry, or as it is being repraised or compressed into the Lord's threefold end time project. We know the threefold end time project. Without the above triplet, it's nothing but wishful thinking. So we're saying to think of fulfilling this vision, to think of fulfilling this uh, project without the above triplet. What's the above triplet? Men of love, men of understanding, men of compassion. It's a wishful thinking. I must be a man of vision of love. I must be a man of understanding. I must be a man with compassion to fulfill this ministry. And as it stands, we are made to fulfill the ministry. The threefold end time project. We are made to fulfill it. How can I raise a great army? How can we be instrument to raise great army without having the qualities of God? Without having these three plates, these three qualities, aside the other ones that have been enumerated. Men of love, men of understanding, men of compassion. So as we are extraying this, all we need to do is to bring ourselves Bring yourself before the mirror of God's word. Ask yourself, do I really have this love that will be explained? As much as we know what love is all about, as much as we know what understanding is all about, compassion is all about, in fact, as it stands, it's like as it is being uh, outlined, somebody would have explained it in his mind and heart and understand where he's going to and where he, from where he's coming from and where he's going to. And probably might even... Uh, explain better than he's doing. But what we need to do is not about academic exercise. It's about bringing ourselves before the mirror of the word of God. Asking, do I carry, do I possess these qualities? And if I don't possess these qualities, how then can I fulfill this ministry? We say there must be a man of love, a woman of love, a girl of love, a boy of love, understanding, and compassion. Much more in this end time, much more in these last days, if we don't possess that quality, it is difficult for us to fulfill this vision. Remember, part of the vision is to raise a great army of believers. Remember, raising a great army of what? Believers. That is to say, it's like saying you are going to preach to somebody who understands the word of God. What are you going to tell the person? What do you have to convince somebody who knows what you know that what you are carrying is better and should be accepted? Just like Bible is saying that the church of God will match in the power of the Holy Ghost. And that is what is happening. Until we possess that thing, it becomes difficult for us to convince others that what we carry is to be embraced or to be accepted. It took the Lord these qualities to send his only begotten son, Jesus, into the world and to cover his cross for the sin of mankind. We're going to explain them as much as we know them, please, as much as you know it, as much as the scriptures might be something we're too familiar with, I plead with us. It has been a nature when such things come. We, we feel we know. We just, let me just be listening, we know. Remember, as we read God's word, I always use the word, the particles of God's spirit, I might be wrong, I might be right, but it might make sense, it might not make sense, but the particles of God's spirit pops into us. You say, does the spirit of God have particles? Yes, at least... When Jesus had said, preached sometime and he said the, the component, I think, of God. So that is to say he's having components and truly he's having components. So love is part of it. Praise the Lord. John chapter 3.
John chapter 3, verse 16. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Very familiar, I think. Another version said, I always like that version, the message where we said, this is how we've come to understand and experience love. Christ sacrificed his life for us. This is why we ought to live sacrificially for our fellow believers and not just be out for ourselves. The love he gave, for love he gave. What should make God give? Do the world deserve the love that God gave? No. As at the time Jesus came, there was nothing that deserved that his love. It was love that made him release what, just like we sang in that song, that he gave all for us. What have we given to him? Because he loved. And remember, this love is not conditional. Because he loved, that is why he gave. What should make him, what should make the recipient of the love, what should make the recipient become merited? We don't merit it. We didn't merit it, reason being that as at the time he loved, as at the time he gave, as at the time God, Jesus came down, he actually came down to a lost world. A ruined and a guilty world. Sometimes when you want to gift somebody or you want to bless somebody, most of them is conditional. Sometimes when you, anytime you want to like express something, meet with one, greet somebody, be with the person, it's always because it's, it's conditional. Now I want to ask, how possible is it for somebody to love the person that killed his father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it even possible? Like as we are now. Is it possible for somebody you knew, you even had, you even saw it. That it was this person that used knife or gun or whatever. Killed somebody so so dear to you and he's saying love the person does it is it making sense it's not making sense humanly speaking it's not making sense the person ruined everything about you ruined your business ruined all and you say love the person and in loving self you're not just loving to say okay i love but you are sacrificing all that you have because of that person who had ruined you that is guilty, that don't merit it. Are you understanding what John 3.16, the, 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 the explanation of John 3.16? The world didn't merit it when he gave. The world was guilty. We're all guilty when he came down. But... It is because we're guilty that he said, I need to recover such persons. That is when he loved. As at that time, we're enemy to God. As at that time, we hated the truth. The world hated the truth. The world broke commandment. Everything he said, they broke commandment of God. All that God saw was rebellion. So it means that the world didn't merit it, but he gave. What manner of love is this? So in case we are trying to explain what is love, you say love is this, love is having affection, love is this. Every of those explanations is just from dictionary, from understanding of men. Every of any of these explanation, dictionary explanation of love and others, they are just from a little, a little dimension of that understanding that men have. And most times, the explanation is not truly, it's not a complete explanation, just a scratch of this love. 
This is how I describe love. Or this is my definition of love. And maybe any other person's definition of love. That love is to treat, to, lo- to, to deal, to treat, to handle somebody from God's point of view. The way I treat you, the way you treat me, the way I handle you, the way you handle me, the way we relate, we are relating from God's point of view. Because he is the embodiment of love. And seeing being the embodiment of love, he is the explanation of love. There can't be any explanation that any person can give that exclude him and you tell me that explanation is correct. It's not correct. If it is correct, I want to ask, if it is correct, how be it that sometimes those things we describe as love? Let me use this as an example. Those days, when they watch a Nigerian movie, you hear love in the air. Love, uh, affect, affection. Love this. But last, 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 let me use the word, last, last, the same people that make such love, 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 end, end up destroying themselves. Are we understanding it? But you discover that this same love that he has, praise the Lord, this same love that he's having was such that we didn't deserve it and he gave us. This same love we heard was such that we were his enemies. He deposited it when we were still his enemies. So I want myself, yourself, to bring yourself before this table. Bring yourself before his word to ask if this was what he did. And this is what he asked me to do. Am I sure I'll be able to accomplish this purpose, this vision? If this is what he did and I'm supposed to do the same, then it means I'm a little bit far or that I've not even started. Hallelujah. First John chapter 3 verse 16. It looked like every of the John 3, 16 is having love statements and words or love explanation. First John chapter 3 verse 16. He said, Hereby receive, perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And what happened, brethren? Okay, I think I made a mistake in that message version. This is actually the message version of it. That this is This is how we have come to understand and experience love. That Christ sacrificed his love for us. This is why we ought to live sacrificially. So that is the thing. We ought to live sacrificially. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. How do we perceive it? Because he laid down his life for us. And we're actually having the experience of it. Amen. Amen. It is that experience that we have that make us understand the love that he gave. Brethren, if he didn't love me, I won't understand his love. If he didn't love you, love is what made every one of us gather here together. Love was what intercepted death from knocking us down. Because death that came through sin was supposed to take everybody. But love was what intercepted it. So if it was love that interrupted death from having effect in our own lives, and he is saying this is the same love, and we are perceiving that this is what he has for us, it means we ought also to do the same. So if we don't possess that quality, it becomes difficult to fulfill this aspect of this vision. Because it takes love to draw somebody close. Amen. It takes love, especially in these last days. It takes love to draw somebody close. Remember, the love was what, do, what doesn't have, it doesn't have condition. The love he heard towards us was the love that we didn't merit. But how be it 
that we expect men to merit our love. It means there is a misplaced love or that it is not in accordance with what he desires. What do I mean? Sometime may go, sometime back. I just want to describe this. Sometime back, once upon a time in this church, there was this young man that had been a young boy that had been disturbing. Disturbing very well. That boy was a thorn in so many persons flesh. Very troublesome. It got to a point that the, the case became so serious. Became very serious that he was summoned. He was summoned at the back where that usher, this, this other side of the ushers, I still remember that place. I still remember how we're all seated. And they all called all the pastors together. And judgment was to be passed. What was the judgment? The judgment that was passed was that this person will cease from becoming a member of this church. That was the judgment that was passed. Now I was invited because I was directly his pastor, youth pastor. So that was why I was in that meeting. Not as if I merited being there. But because he had been directly involved. So after all said and done, and in fact, even where he was seated, the, his, his posture there was showing disrespect. Disrespect among elders. Among elders. The way he was sitting, he was sitting like one big man among elders. And after everything, they passed judgment. And what did they say? Well, from now. And in fact, their judgment was correct. There was one statement that if you allow one hand to touch oil, that it will soil the other hand, which is correct. Truth, brethren. It will soil the other hands. And so that was the judgment that was passed because of that. Now, when they finished that and passed that verdict, they now asked me, what do you have to say? Judgment had been passed already. Judgment had been passed already. So what do you have? Do you have anything to say? I've said this here before. And I stood up and said, well, I thank you for all that you said. You all correct my fathers. You have spoken well. But there was this statement my mom always said, that you don't throw the child with the dirty water. I think that's the way. I learned that thing from my mom then. That you don't throw the child with, is it with the dirty water. With bad water. You don't bath uh -huh. You don't throw the child with the bathroom water. Correct. So that was the statement. And I said, most of us, we are useless until grace found us. That where nobody but grace found us and today look like we are, we are being useful. And, that, and I'll describe somebody else again. That once upon a time, he was accosted there and they asked him not to enter here because he didn't merit entering. By the physical look, he didn't merit entering until he some, you know, some kind of uh, interception that enabled him to enter. But today, he's better, he's fine, and he's being useful amongst us. Now, I said that after making that statement that please, if paraventure we can permit him, if we can still give him time, maybe grace will find him, and probably he will be better. After making that statement for like, to be far from exaggeration, for like 30 seconds, nobody talked. Because as if this word came and broke everybody's heart. Then somebody now stood and said, hmm, I think now I know that you are the man for that, that, those children. That was the statement one of the pastors said. So I feel you are the person for those children. Meaning, you rightly fit them. That was just what he said. Now, finally, they changed the judgment because every other person started agreeing to what he has said. From one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they started agreeing to what he said. Then the judgment was upturned. Now, what was said was, from now onward, any time he misbehaves, we will we'll hold you responsible. I agreed. And after then, it was not as if he stopped. He continued to disturb, and they were holding me responsible. 
The day I was coming down, I traveled and I was coming down. That day I had to attend fellowship. In fact, it was outside. They stopped me and said, see, see him. Oh, yeah. Gathered him one side when this place was still, I think, whether it was still a secretariat or something like that. Gathered him one side. The way he was looking, he wasn't looking okay. With his collar, everything, with his shirt, all flat. At first, I had to gather him. Start buttoning his shirt. Repair the back. Because he was already foaming. So, to, to, to calm down that, 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 that foam, I had to just change the, 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 what adjective would I use? More like, switch from the original thing that brought me to another thing. So, I was just repairing it, just repairing it, buttoning him, just calmly watching. And I discovered that it's as if he was gathering himself it was returning down. And I said, why now? He did this, he did this. Say, no, these are your elders. Or you go and tell him sorry. Say you are sorry. No, no, no. I say, go and say you are sorry. You will not change anything. And he just went and fumily just said he's sorry. And that was how he left. Now I continue to follow him all that while. It was not as if he stopped. Continued and continued. But once upon a time. The day that young man started carrying Bible to church. I used to sit at that back. And he sits the other side. Charismatic hour days. Anytime I see him pray, I will stop praying and be looking at him. I said, what really happened? I just feel happy. Anytime I see him, I'll see him vibrating, vibrating. I say, wow, is it this young man? Is it this person? And that was how nobody ever knew he is existing again. Because he became better. Today he's not here. He's out there. But in his station, he's doing marvelously well. I actually met him during a new day here. And I was happy he came with his people. What am I saying? It was love. That drew the other sword, intercepted that sword. But it was not as if he merited it. I don't know, are we getting it? He didn't merit it. So you understand that it was that law that caused that person to become better because the judgment that would have been passed would have actually turned him away. And probably whatever grace or opportunity or privilege or cover of God over him here, it's not as if God will lose him. Heaven will still get him, but he will never be able to, it will never be attributed to us. I don't know how we getting it. His salvation or his help will never be attributed to any person. And one day I was just thinking, I sat down, I was just thinking, I was, I was smiling. I said, what will happen any day, any of such person we come out being wonderful, becoming good, come out to give testimony. And uh, in the testimony, he was, as having become good and everybody is celebrating him or her. And the person was to say that, but this one didn't give me opportunity. And you are in that midst. And you are the person is wanting to point out and say, but so so person almost threw me away. I would have been lost. But Jesus found me. The Lord used these ones to find me, and now I'm, and we are celebrating him. What will be the thought and the mind of that person that didn't give him that opportunity? Are we understanding it? I was just thinking of it one day. I said, Kai, but sometimes some actions that we do might kill. What are we saying? Love. You take that love. Now, that was the love described here. He did it not because we merited it. He did it because we didn't merit it, but he's seeing the other side. That was that dimension Jesus said here. Now, being the embodiment of love, and because he made man in his image and out of his own volition, he did what he loved. First John chapter 4, verse 16. This is verse 16, 16. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. Hmm. 
God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Are we understanding it? God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in him. But first he said, and we have known. How did we know? Because we had the experience. He said, it, this description of we have known, is not because we are taught. Not because somebody preached to us. See where you can deduce that. He said, and we have known and believed the love that God had. Where? To us. So it is the to us that made us know and believe. So we are like the result of that experiment he did in the lab. I don't know. Are we getting it? There is an experiment he carried out. We are the result of that experiment. That is the experiment of love. So, having known it by being the result of that is exper experiment, we believed, we know and we believe because it is towards us, towards me. Because I was useless, never having anything to do with God. But it was love that drew this salvation plan and dragged me from uselessness to being useful in the kingdom. So now I have known it and I believed it because it showed it to me. We, you have known it, you have believed it because you have experienced it. And having done that, he now said, and he that dwelleth and that and believe the love that God had to us. God is what? Love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. God is the embodiment of love. God is the physical love we see. God is, in fact, God is like, the love is like the system, a system. So God is that system. So it means everything that is found from that system should carry the component of God, as our Jesus will say. So if I am of God, then it means I am carrying the particles of him, the component of him, because I am of him. So I ought to love because he loved and I'm the experiment of that love so if I am not loving now we begin to check where did we get or where did you get your own life from so if you are not loving we need to settle it check it where did you get your own life from because the place where others got their life that place is called love and that love is what they are replicating you are not loving or I'm not loving. Where did I come from? From where did I get my own life from? Because in him is life. And that life is what? That life is what? The light of men. So if I am claiming to have light, it is because I collected life from him. Now I am claiming to have light and now I have reflected the light to men. If you claim you have light and we are not seeing the reflection of you, we are rather seeing darkness, we begin to check. Let us go back to your source. Where did you get your own from? That is just what he said. He said, God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. You see, when you talk of love, love is not puffed up. Love is not puffed up. Love is, love is sacrificial. Love do not think of itself. That's what Paul said. Love don't think of itself. Love think of on another. And that's why if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I think chapter 12 or chapter 13, when he talk about the gifts, he said he that speaketh uh, He said, do I speak, I think 1 Corinthians chapter 13, do I speak with the tongues of men and of angels? Hmm. And I have not what? What am I? How be it that I'm speaking with the tongues of men and of angels? Blowing tongue. Do miracles, signs and wonders, but not in love. I do not have love. He said, I'm just wasting time. Because for him, he's checking. Where did you generate your own from? 
You are manifesting something that is not consistent with where it is supposed to be from. With God, there is love. And if it is far from me, then it means that we will check my source. It's either I, I didn't get it right or along the line there was, there was a contamination. It's either you didn't get it right or it was contaminated along the way. Love is what will make you obedient to a child's word. Even right now, you know, our daddy have always been making statements of when the word of God is going, people are there doing what they feel like. It is also love that will make you condescend. Let me use the word condescend low. Let me use the word condescend low. Small boy that is talking, what does he know? What does he know? You know, because they give him opportunity. What does he know? Let me go and be doing my other normal business. So you smith anybody to greet. Uh, how far? What's happening? What happened last week? Ah, this other one. Love will make you condescend low. Because it was love that brought him down. Do you know that Adam was not deceived? It was Eve that was deceived. It's scriptural, Abby. Adam fell because of love. That's not. That's true. Bible said it, that it was Eve that was deceived. But Adam fell because of love. Yes, now. The wife is already down. Love made him eat, no problem. As you are going down, let's go down together with you. But if you look at it clearly, even in the scripture, he's the first Adam, the second Adam, it was love that brought him down. Yes. Nobody scammed Jesus in heaven. When they scammed him, he now fell down. No, 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 no. No. It was love that brought him down from glory to this ordinary person because we are the bride of Christ. Since we are down, he had to come down. I want to stand in the brethren. So just like Adam also came down because of his bride. His own wife. It is even love that will make somebody, even when they begin to call you and say, hey, see what this woman did and this, 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 this. There and then he said, no, well, no problem. Uh, just forget about the thing. Try to defend her before those who are wanting to place um, anything over her. It's love. Without love, you know what would have been happening? They come and report that this is what they are doing. They say, hey, I know it. Nonsense. From there, you start hitting nonsense, useless. What? But love is what will make the thing come. Now return back and settle it. Ah, see how powerful that love is. So when you look at it, you discover that if Jesus can come down because of love. It's even love that we make anybody listen to that small boy that is talking and say, let me just sit down and listen. Not because he's having the knowledge, but because, just because I love the word of God, I love this house. But do you know what happened? The moment, the moment there is a transfer, an interception, the devil will collect love, take away love, put pride, self. You know, love is selfless, right? So when it, there is selfishness, it, it becomes the opposite of the attribute of love. Are we getting it? So at this point in time, you are now wanting to be selfish. You are not self, being selfless. Say, okay, well, let me just condescend. Let me agree to what is being said. But let me just do my own. I should remove my own. So it is at this point in time, you just see, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. May we capture this love. If we capture it, we will win souls. We will win lives. Is it not love that will make you see even a young person that is coming and not looking very well, not looking well dressed, not looking okay, and love will just make you shield it for that moment, shield your sword. 
It's not as if you are embracing or you should accept iniquity or be comfortable with it or be fanning iniquity or whatever, yeah, immorality or, or, or uncleanness or whatsoever. But love will shield your soul first. Then love will capture the heart. Then you deliver what you need to deliver. Love has captured many lives to some places. But lack of love is throwing others away. You just see the person coming. <laughs> like this. I'm coming into the church like this. What do you mean? What do you mean? You are the people that used to spoil this place. Ah, brother. Somebody was telling me something. Say, why are these people doing like this? Do you know? Most of the things that happen on the way. There are times I see some people, some young ones on the way and I see them not dressed the way they should dress contrary to the way we dress you know the usual me that they used to know is the one that don't laugh that's the language they use but I used to laugh oh. very well very playful very playful see me I can play very well but it's like the original face the original cover depicted a hard and a tough person. So, from afar, the moment they see, the next thing they begin to think is, huh, huh, you're seeing me now. I know he's going to talk. I know he will talk now. I believe that will be what will be going through the person's mind. Because I already know him. I know how he will talk. Now, the person or the young person we want to put up a defense mechanism. Or want to put up, yes, a defense mechanism. In case he confront me now. Oh, is this business? What? But do you know what I do? I've done it severally. When I mean, they just pass, oh, how are you? Just greet the person. How do you do? Not even thinking of anything. Greet the person very well. Where are you going to? I'm going to social place. Okay, fine. Bye-bye. The thought in the heart is, is it really this person or he has changed? Unfortunately, one came to my shop one day. Came to the complex one day. Passed. I didn't know that was my place. And I now called the person. Hi! It's like hell was let loose. Because you can see the way she was coming in. But I greeted, greeted. I didn't even know. As, I didn't even behave as if I saw the, the thing she was wearing. Just greeted, waved. How are you? Greeted. I said, just, just thing. Talking other things. I said, okay, bye-bye. She left. Do you know she returned back again? Yes. Returned back again. Meaning, there is an atmosphere that is loving that I have found. Not because of it. I've learned something. He said, one man of God said something. He said, you don't preach by, 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 what's the word again? That you, you preach by being uh, 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 steered in your heart, not because of an atmosphere. I, I've not, I don't, I've forgotten the adjective, but not because of a situation. The moment you see somebody who is picking cigarettes and is smoking, and you are there to minister, you just start telling him about cigarettes. You will never win this. So, are we getting it? You will never win that. So. The moment you see just wearing trousers, you just, the, your first ministration there is, you see, all the people that wear this thing will go to hell. And the rest of them, you will never win that soul. Especially in these last days. These last days. Jesus Christ, when he met the woman at the well, it's not as if he didn't know that that woman had got seven husbands. So for us, that woman is a useless irritating her lot in the streets. One, no do you. Two, three, four, five. Hmm, you're smelling by our analysis. And he met her and he was gisting with her. He didn't bring message. He entered a different thing. After capturing her heart, it was the woman that owned up. You can see how love captured the woman. So he moved away from the original thing, from the thing that we would have attacked. And do you know it is because we lack 
the gospel. That is why we are presenting what we have. When I carry the gospel and I present the gospel, the gospel of love will capture that heart, especially these last days. And somebody told me something and I said, see, oh, you need to do something. There are, the way these people are not looking. You know what? At a point in time, I said, I know. But you know the problem? I am at fault. And I told her, I said, until we start seeing our faults in the activities that are going on, we will never be able to win this peaceful to the way we want. How? What do I mean by I'm at fault? I said, if I've been able to develop so much that the part of me will be seen by the person and the person will have no choice but to submit because there is the development that I have that the person is seeing that is admiring. It will not take much. I won't be struggling to hit the person and shout and shout. Let there be. Once upon a time when we began, we were discussing, I was discussing with Ben and the youth were not really coming there. So he said something. He said, we should, we should just go and send message. Let them call them. Let them come down. At the point, I said, no, don't worry. Make the place comfortable. till we come around. Make the place conducive. Churn out what will be attractive. And you will see men come. And he started moving. And gradually, there was a particular week that the place were now looking for chairs. And he came and called me and said, hmm, that thing is working. I say, yes, it's working. So, if we build our lives, just like the Bible says, where carcasses are, what will happen? Vultures will gather there. I need to grow. We need to grow. If we grow, we will not struggle with the kindergartens. We will easily and readily capture those hearts until we grow. So many of the struggles we're having. So many of the things we're contending and fighting against. Until we grow, it will not stop. Hallelujah. That's why 1 John chapter 3 verse 1 said, What manner of law the Father has bestowed unto him. Being the embodiment of knowledge, he has understanding from mankind. As to the deceit of Satan in the garden, the subsequent loss of the glory and the resultant sin of mankind. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. He said, being the embodiment of knowledge, he has understanding for mankind. And that is the understanding that he is bidding that we should have. What are those understandings? One of such understanding is the deceit of Satan in the garden. The subsequent loss of the glory and the resultant sinfulness of mankind. That's why Romans 3 verse 23 said, For all have seen and come short of the glory of God. So it was that understanding which is part of the attribute we must carry. You must possess understanding. If you don't possess understanding, we can't, we can't achieve this ministry. It cannot be fulfilled. For him, the understanding he had, first of all, is about mankind. That understanding for mankind is first, the deceit of Satan in the Garden of Eden. He knew that Satan deceived man. He knew that that man didn't originally want to go that way. Something made it so. So that's the first understanding. The second understanding is that thing. It now brought in the loss of glory and the resultant sinfulness of mankind. Deceit brought the man, take, took away glory from that man. So the last thing that happened to man was as a result of the first thing that took place. Satan came and the God man, deceived man. So one of the things that happened, one of the proceeds or 
the, 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 what it gave birth to was the loss of glory. Man fell from glory. Man now became sinful. So that same understanding must be settled in us. What is that understanding? Let's describe it this way. Somebody might be saying, I don't understand this part. Let's describe it this way. Somebody is just coming in. And first of all, you have not even checked. Where is this person coming from? Oh, no wonder the devil has so deceived church folks. What has he done? So deceived us that since this is what we desire, since that is what we know or what we desire, he will transform himself as an angel of light. So one who is demon possessed can look sisterly, look so sisterly that your welcoming will be so that is so loving. Are we understanding it? But one who look ragged, that is just coming from the point of the understanding of he or she is having, will be repelled by us. Uh, this one said, push this one to the back before he seduce the people in front. As if eventually is being admitted into this place. But who did he come for? He actually came for the lost. So that understanding made him understood that it was the deceit of Satan in that garden that brought the loss of glory. So man should have been carrying glory. A man is having glory. But Satan came, made that glory go. And from there, man became sinful. Now, I return back to that same statement. If I had not given that young man or had not brought that opportunity before the table, how would that young man be saved? How would he have become better? And the same with so many of us and many who will be saved in this life. Opportunity, understanding. There have been times when they've come, some of those youths know it. As I talk now, some of them will know, both those who are here will know. There are times they've reported some matters to me and said this was what this person did and this, this. In fact, this is what you have to do. I say, okay. Okay. And in the end, I'll just be monitoring and be watching. So I might not even tell them that. I'll be watching and try to see how to build a better life in such person. But you know, most times we see that as weakness. But in the real sense of it, it's an understanding. And Jesus had that understanding. How be it that he managed those 12 disciples? How be it that he managed them with their various kinds of understanding and life? was able to manage them and gather them together. He took understanding to gather men. Because every person will be coming from the point of his life, his understanding, his awareness, things that are peculiar to him. Somebody who is coming from a place where they don't know anything about pity. It's like somebody who is uh, born in a polygamous home. And every now and then is quarrel. Let me use this for example. A child that is born in a home where the father and mother quarrel every time they fight, they fight and fight and fight every day, every time they quarrel, they fight. What do you think will be going on in the child's life, in the child's mind? How will that child grow? That child will grow knowing or feeling that it's a way of life. Am I, am I clear? The same thing with different dimension of life. So, if that person happened to come, now, that child might grow up becoming a tyrant. Probably. That child might grow up becoming a bully. One who at every given time is angry, is not smiling. Because always, they have been quarrel, anger, trouble in the house. So he grew up with anger, trouble. It became a part of him. Now that person happened to come in your midst. Come in our midst. Another person from another dimension. Another person from another place. Another person from a broken home. Another person from this. Different kinds are all gathered. And we are to manage the people. How can you manage such people without understanding? Something brought it. Something made it be. It was not as if originally they want to come from such homes or come from such place, but something made it so. 
So God, Jesus, knew that something made man fall from glory. So his understanding was as a result of what made man fall. Not as if man originally wanted to fall, but something made man fall. That's just the way we need to explain this. If we don't have understanding, we can't help people in achieving this work. Can we read uh, uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 19? Romans chapter 5, verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one man shall many be made what? Righteous. One man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Should we now remain and say, so everybody is supposed to be a sinner? No. One man obedience made others become righteous. So it is possible that for a reason, these ones who came in were living like this or behaving like this. For another reason, they should be better. Hallelujah. For my understanding, they should be better. From the place they are coming from, something made the person so. Now, if I want this person to be who I want him or her to be, then I need to bring it out. I need to channel it to the person. I need to make, express it. I don't expect that the person should be coming from where he or she is coming with the understanding that I'm having. If that be so, it means I can't win any soul. And if we must fulfill the vision of the watchman at such a time like this, we must be men of that understanding, especially, remember the word, at such a time as this. At such a time as this. This kind of time. This kind of time. We don't have understanding. We will not win lives. The natural, can we read Psalm 147 verse 5? So 147, verse 5 says, Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is what? Different, it's, it's beyond our comprehension. It doesn't have an end. And if this be God, then, if I carry the particles of God, I should carry the particle of that understanding. Are we understanding, brethren? If this be God, being this, and I am from God, in him we live, in him we walk, in him we do what? In him we do what? Have our being. So, my living is him. The embodiment of me should be in him. So if it is, if I if I'm not manifesting it, it means I am not having my being in him. If that word be true, in him we live, in him we walk, in him we have our being. Then in him should our living, having our being. So my breathing is in him. So how then am I breathing out something that is not consistent with him? Then am I sure I'm actually getting my life in him? Because in him we walk. In him we live. If I'm living in him, I should be waking up in him. Waking up from him, Abby. Am I, am I right, brethren? If I'm living in him, when I wake up, I'm waking up from him. As much as it's still inside him. It is that thing that will make us have that understanding that any person or the life of that sister that is not too okay, it's not as if, it's not as if yours is so beautiful. It's just that there is, 
there is the department of you that when they come there, they will not give you good mark. Am I understanding? Are we understanding this? Uh, this sister, this sister, her life said, now wow, Kai, no, 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 her life, now wow. Understanding will still make me relate with that sister, notwithstanding. Are we getting it, brethren? Understanding will make me not write her off, still believing that grace might find her. It's just time. The issue is just time and God. It's just time and God, that's all. That's like uh, um, Ecclesiastes, we say time and chance. So it's just time and God. And when the time is ripe, just like I mentioned that young man, when his time was ripe, nobody knew this person was existing again because it became better. Except and only except that person had been built for hell. But no man is built for hell. It's only that we decide to go to hell after salvation has been released. That's why he said that the grace of God that bringeth salvation have done what? Appear to all men. It has come to teach us something. What has it come to teach us? Denying ungodliness and unrighteousness. That we now will now do some things. What are we to do? Live soberly and godly in this present world. So until the dimension of we, me, the dimension of me chooses not to change finally. But as far as God is concerned, he's still seeing a precious thing out of the nonsense. Who would have believed that the great great grandmother of Jesus was a harlot? Am I wrong? Who would have believed that it's going to come from a Rahab, a harlot? The lineage of Jesus will come from there. And there was a statement in Joshua, I think Joshua chapter 6, can figure that later, chapter 6 verse 22. We've read that in here before. He said, go into the house of the harlot and bring me what? The woman. And we describe it that he said, as much as you might say, eh, well, that might not be what it means, but this is our deduction. Go into the house of the harlot and bring me a woman. So in the house of a harlot, there is a woman. The container is harlot, but in that container, there is a precious woman that will have the lineage of Jesus. Are we getting it? And that is how it is, it has always been. Many containers that we carry is useless. And most times, it is from the trash can that you find treasure. Yes. Yes. Where did something get honey? From carcass. Dead what? Lion. Dead. Smelly. From smelling thing, that's where he got honey. Honey that you eat. But from where? Dead animal that is smelling. That when you pass around, you will perceive and you will not want to pass through that area. Hmm, something is smelling. Is there something rotten here? But it is from that smelling thing he got a sweet stain. So many smelling things have sweet things, but who will discover it? And that is just it. Understanding will make us know that kind. From this life, something good can come out of you. Notwithstanding the present state. And my judgment will not be by the present state. Because Jesus didn't judge us by our present state. He judged us by where we are going to, not where we are coming from. Because where we are coming from is bad. Satan battered us and damaged us. But where he has slated us to go is eternal life. And only holy men and righteous men. And if he make us holy and righteous, when we as we proceed, we will get to eternal life. So what is this? What are we saying? From the point he's seen, he's seen from glory point. But as we keep seeing, we see from this and without understanding. And it was that thing that brought compassion. After having that understanding, it now built compassion inside him. And you know, if you love and you have understanding, it will now breed compassion. So compassion will now make you okay. Don't worry. Take this. Psalm 86, 
verse 15. He said, but thou, O Lord, art a God of, at a God full of what? And gracious, long-suffering, and plenteous in mercy and what? Truth. He's full of compassion. So if this is God, and I am coming from God, I shall have the fullness of also that compassion. 103 verse 13. Like as a father pitied his children, so the Lord does what? Pity them that fear him. There is that pity. There is that love that said understanding that will breed compassion. And that compassion has to do with pity. Following the above rule, we must be people of love, understanding, and compassion. Being children of God, having the spirit of God, which is the spirit of love, we must love. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Five twenty-two said, "But the fruit of the spirit is what? Love, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. What? Faith. So, if the fruit of the spirit is love, what fruit am I producing? What fruit?" Are you producing? If the spirit of God dwelleth inside me, which is supposed to be, by virtue of coming into Jesus, by accepting him in our life as Lord and Savior, except we fainted at the cross. And maybe that is why we actually fainted at the cross. And the fainting was so long that we didn't know that the main transaction didn't take place. When we say the word fainting, it's possible we came to Jesus through, through coming to this kind of church. And maybe some problems were solved. Or that we started coming to this church and so loved what is going on. And now became part of it. Not that we had serious encounter. Not that we came and met uh, what, just what the Bible said. That... Um, um, that... Um, godly sorrow lead to what? Repentance. And that to salvation. Now, not as if we met with godly sorrow. Not as if we met with him. We stayed so long. We loved what is going on. We now became part of it. We didn't have serious encounter. There was no encounter that was tangible that we could say, God, this encounter made me. And no wonder, without an encounter, it becomes difficult to get those components of that person who that encounter should uh, derive from. If I don't have an encounter with Jesus, how can I get the component of Jesus? Because it is the encounter with Jesus that made me. The life of Jesus is now the life I live. The life I live now is now the life of Jesus. The same thing with manifestation of power as it is the in thing now. Which should be anyway. But it is now not becoming consistent with God. How? We have always sung the song, peace, purity, power. She will sang that song. We know that that's the three things. Peace, purity, power. So yes, a Christian must first of all have peace. And that peace is peace with God. Salvation. He have repented, accepted Jesus. Now the peace of God have settled. is now in right standing with God. Purity is now living godly life. It's now being sanctified. Now the power of God will now come in. He's manifesting the power. Now how be it that the third one is in existence. And the first one or the second one is not being seen. Now, if the third one is in existence, it's expected that the first one had taken place. 
Are we understanding, brethren? How can somebody get to invest in without first of all writing jam or even getting a egg? It's not possible now. How can our mommies then promote somebody to, 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 to SS1 without going through uh, 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 GS3? GS3 exam. Junior WAEC. But you know it still can be possible these days. You know it still can be possible. All you just do, you just go say, I want to join SS1. Manufacture one result that made it possible or made it okay for you that you have finished your junior work or whatever. It's very possible. And that is the possibility of what is going on now. Why are we saying so? If this manifestation is okay, correct, it should be. Yes, it should be. Now, we want to check all this component of Jesus this system of law, system of compassion, system of um, uh, understanding, the person should have gotten derived this power from that system because it is that system that contains love, understanding, compassion, then the power. So manifestation of power must be consistent with this system, with him being God. So I should have love. If they search the side of love, they should find it. I should have understanding. If they search the dimension of understanding, they should find it. I should have compassion. If they search me, they should find that part. And there will be manifestation of it. But when it is not there, begin to check. What really happened? Maybe something happened. Or there was a manufacture, or a result. A, new, a, a different result was uh, captured and the person had to pass through with a different result. But you know, there's always a time a screening time. There will be a time when they will screen every person to be sure that the result you use in entering this institution was genuine. There will always be a time. In fact, no man will bypass that time. Being children of God, having the spirit of God, we ought to love. We must have understanding for others as to the incapacitation, the depravity, or whatever that needs to be corrected in their lives. With love and understanding, compassion will flow. If I have love, I have understanding, compassion can readily flow. That love is not the absence of um, uh, challenges. I don't know whether we're getting what I'm saying. It's not say every person now will all become loving and uh, nothing will be well. There must be the problem that we generate the love now. There must be the challenge that will make you love and have understanding. It is challenges that will come to make you prove that what you carry is truth. I'm living in church every now and then. How can I prove sitting there every now and then, sitting there, waking up there, waking up, eating, sleeping, rising. It is when I get out there, get to the marketplace, get to places, that's when I will prove the component of God that I possess. So it is not even in church. Because in church, everybody is pious. It's Santimona. I think I'm correct. I'm not sure you will match somebody now. You pass, the person will hit you and say, where did you match? You mistakenly hit somebody and next thing you will slap you in church. It doesn't happen. No, 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 it doesn't happen. The only thing there might just be you just touch your leg and look at the person. And the person realizes, you say, I'm sorry. It's okay, no problem, no problem. No problem. It's not as if actually the real you, there is no problem. It's just that we're in church. Oh. You hear somebody say, it's because we're in church. Oh. So the manifestation of these attributes is found first in the marketplace around places where where you don't see a, you don't you, you don't dwell in an atmosphere that will make it happen uh, if are, are we getting what i'm saying it's an atmosphere where these things the atmosphere you are will not just make it happen in church the atmosphere in church will make it happen the atmosphere in church will make me love will make me have understanding will make me have compassion even though it has become uh, bad these days that's why it is at such a time as this. It has become bad these days that some people don't care. 
Say, I, I don't care. Here, here, I will deal with you. That's the damage that the devil have done even in the church of today. So we're saying that our understanding for others will make us see their incapacitation, their depravity, and whatever that, that needs to be corrected in their life. Please, it is understanding that will make us relate to these young ones. We must relate with young ones with understanding, especially this time. Somebody you have not known how far. Our daddy made one statement from the scripture. He said, my little children, in whom what? I travel. Do you know, after our, our meeting here, the understanding became fresh. I've read that place before. That was when I saw the hidden truth inside it. In whom I travel in pain. Again. I've never taken note of again. Brethren, are we getting what I'm saying? Go back to that scripture. In whom I travel in pain. Again. Not as if in whom I travel in pain. Until Christ is dead. Mm -hmm. If we miss that again, show it. It is not the first time I've been having understanding with that sister. It's not the first time I've been having understanding with this youth. Every time, all these youths, the way I'm seeing them, this youth, God, <clears throat> wow, I don't even know what they are doing in that youth church. That sister, I've been seeing her. It's not to, if it's the first time, I would have said no problem. This is not the first time. This is not the second time. This is not the third time. In whom I travel again. Until how much is until? Please, how long is until? If anybody can explain until for me, we'll be good to go. Explain until so that we stop at that your explanation. He said, Until Christ is what? So Again, do it again, bro. No problem. She's still looking like that. No wahala. I said there was somebody that I was following up many years back. I, at a point in time, I stood in the room where I normally stay. And I look at the Bob. It's like that's where I used to. I said, I stand here to say that I will continue to follow you until six months' time. Even if you are bad, until six months' time, you'll be better. And, and the person became better. Became a Christian. But it was not easy. Everything was still bad. You talk today, ha. Ah, the next day you see a worse thing. Another day again, it's as if you didn't do anything, self. Another time it's as if, ah, this is even worse than, better than myself than even now. There are the things, the dimension that will be seen. But it was understanding that made me stood there and say, no problem. Just be doing anyhow, but I will wait, even if it's six months until you become better. And truly, truly, the person became better. For the first time in life, I have seen one particular young man come to my shop and say, please, what you did in this person's life, can you do it in my own life? Because I see this person is a Christian now. For the first time, somebody has ever come to my shop a young man, and say, please, what you did in that person's life, please do it to my own life. That's the first time. So, for somebody to come with a testimony of another, that person is better. But it take understanding to draw to that point. So, in whom I travel again. How many, we have, we have asked us, say, who can explain again? Until, sorry, until. Because until don't have end. He said until. So any day that happened, that's the until. Until Christ is formed. That is when the until ends. So that Christ has not been formed, bro. Let's continue. Let's understand and walk in it. So how can those who do not have the above quality correct and change others? Or unite the brethren or the church. If the ministry must be achieved, it must be 
true love, understanding, and compassion. So, I want you to put yourself through this word. If this ministry must be achieved, do I have this quality? How can me that don't have this quality change others? You know, it's not, sometimes it's not everything that is being said. It's not everything that should be said, sir. It is when you start having understanding. Behave as if you didn't know that thing is existing. Behave as if you didn't know that thing is happening. But you're having understanding and you're drawing the person close. You're drawing the person close. With that understanding, so many people became Christians and children of God because of an understanding and the love of another. Not because they preached to them. And do you know that is what is happening today by those who have understanding? And yet, we claim to be a corrective ministry. A ministry that has been raised in this end time to draw men to Jesus and to unite the church and to raise a great army. How be it that we are void of these three qualities? And men who don't claim to have that ministry of drawing or capturing men at the last days are distributing or exhibiting that quality. Somebody told me that when he traveled to Abuja and came back, one young man, when he traveled to Abuja and came back, he said his soul became weak uh, in us, but he went to a particular ministry that the reception he got, oh my God, he said the reception he got, he was treated like one big man. A youth, he said he was treated like one big man. Now the moment he left, the calls he continued to receive and the call was the welcoming form. Why will he not want to attend again? Because of that reception. Why will he not want to attend again? Brethren, brethren, these are the last days. Let's see how we can wrap up the much that are still available. Let's see how we can gather the small that is left. Let it not be that every time this same statement is coming up, and yet the result is not being seen. It looks like somebody just pouring water on the sand. Bro, sister, build understanding, love, and draw compassion from it. Such will make us win souls, who win men, who fulfill this work. How can it be when, when we gather before the throne, after having fulfilled others, they now demand to know, okay, this is the attribute of God. They listed seven attributes of God. And from one to six, we have not found any that we possess. Eh? It just at, a, a listed seven attributes of God. For any man who is entering here, you know, you must show your certificate, Abi. Yes, now I'm right. You must present your certificate. Apart from the certificate of uh, the death of Jesus on the cross, which is the blood of Jesus that washed our sins, we cannot just be washed and we just enter heaven like that. Other things must follow. Living out their lives. Possessing all these things. So, how be that when they come before the pearly gates of heaven and they are to display the certificate or to display these qualities of God, which every man who is born of God, who is born of God, should possess. And from one to six, they were counting one, they check love. They search, search, they didn't see love. In part of, okay, no problem, maybe we'll get others. They check compassion, they check uh, understanding, they check these other things, check, and they count to six and they've not found any. The question would have been, where are you coming from? Yes, now, where are you coming from? Who did you say? Where did you get your own encounter? Because the man whom this encounter is supposed to derive from, we have checked six of it, you don't have any. So where did you get your encounter? No wonder, no wonder, no wonder the statements. Did we not heal in your name? Did we not do this in your name? Did we not do miracle in your name? Did we not do science in your name? Did we not bless many in your name? Did we not charge the people in your name? Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not this? Did we not that? Did we not this? Did we not that? But the final statement will be, depart from me, ye walkers of. Somebody send you, though you were using me to accomplish it. Because we have checked 
the attributes that you are supposed to possess, you don't have any. We have counted one to six, and we are about to enter the seventh one. And you didn't, you didn't possess one to six, brothers and sisters. One to seven being the 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 the, 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 the uh, a, a mark. One to three should be credit. Yes, now if hundred percent is a fifty, at least should be fifty should be what C now. Even though today fifty is like fail. But at least 50 should be C. C, then it used to be C6. C2. Okay. Now, 1 to 20. Teachers, 1 to 20 will be have what? What would be the result? 1 to 20. F9. 1 to 10. Go. And in 1 to 100, they've counted 1 to 80, and you didn't get any. Remember, to 50 alone is C. To 40 might be pass D. Now, to 20 is already fellow, and they've counted 80. Remember how many will be left? Already reaching 80, you already know that you have failed. So the question will be, did you really write this exam? So what he might be saying, that's why I say, no wonder he will say, did we not do this in your name? We manifested the part of you. We showed that yes, we are from you. How is it you are rejecting us? And he said, no, 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 no. Leave. You were working for who? You were actually working on, but somebody sent you. I didn't send you. You were walking through, through. That's why I say, walk us off. Iniquity is the man that was in charge of the company you were working in. You were actually using my name to manifest. And any man that uses his name, his name contains the power to achieve any results. Because he said, in the name of Jesus, what will happen? It doesn't matter who is calling it. Are we getting it? But in his name, because the name already have possessed that power. The name had merited it. The name had already gotten it. He said, because he had done this and that, he said, now, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He has gone. He has sacrificed. He has gotten, he has merited that power. It is after he has finished that. After he made all those sacrifices, he now said, now, all power in heaven and on earth have been given unto me. In the name of Jesus, every year shall bow. So in case you want to demand that the name will cause riot or, pro or, 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 or solution to life. The name will give it. But actually, the attribute of who you are calling his name is not found in you. So leave. Though you walked, but somebody sent you. But you were using me. And no problem, you have used me. You have achieved some results. But you were not for me. These attributes are not found. Can we rise up, brethren? Brethren, all that is needed for us is to put ourselves in this, this uh, map. Analyze yourself. Let's come back to this drawing board. Do I possess this quality? Do I possess this attribute? And any man in Christ ought to possess Christ. And if I possess Christ, I have to get the component of Christ. It's not as if you need to pray so much for it. But the truth is, if Christ is really formed in me, then the eye of Christ is also in me. If Christ is formed in me, the nose of Christ is also in me. If Christ is formed, remember the formed is formed. So eyes is formed, the ear is formed, just like a child is formed in the womb. So Christ is formed in me. The eyes of Christ is formed. The ear of Christ is formed. The nose of Christ. The legs of Christ. The hands of Christ. The head of Christ is formed in me. How do we mean by eyes, nose? The attribute of Christ is now formed in me. And if the attribute is not formed in me, is it Christ that is formed in me or another child enter that womb? 
But we need to ask God. I'm not seeing myself. I'm not seeing the thing I'm manifesting consistent with you. And since it's not consistent with you, show me mercy. Let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. And let's take it serious. It is understanding that we bring men. How be it that every now and then we're having empty seeds? Because the things that, it might not be much of so much talk talk. It might be the display of our lives. If we display understanding and love in the marketplace, men will want to follow you to that place. I've told us sometimes that somebody, there is a display I made and somebody started asking me, are you a pastor? I didn't tell anybody I'm anything. I even told him because in fact I was not. And I'm not. I'm still a brother. And I told him, say, no, no, I'm a brother. How can a brother manifest this thing? It takes somebody with this kind of a, a ordination, as it were, by the mindset of human, to manifest this thing you are manifesting. This calmness, this quietness, this not hushing me and retaliating just immediately. That's practically what it means. And the next thing was, which church do you attend? He knows that you cannot be normal to have all this quality. Something, somewhere, something would have been the source. I want to trace your source. Are you a pastor, number one? No. Where is your source? Are you from so-so place? Yes. Good. He has, he has, uh, 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 concluded in his mind that okay that was the reason for that action so the same thing men should be able to conclude just like when they saw this man when they saw the man the disciples of jesus what did the disciples do when they check everywhere these people are not learned men the next thing they remember they say okay this man have been with jesus it take a man being with jesus to possess this attribute ah no wonder eh, now i know now Shouldn't somebody, shouldn't, shouldn't a child look like his parents? Somebody should be able to look at a child and say, you are, are you the child of so, so, so person? Why? There is the resemblance. Why am I not resembling Christ in love, in understanding, in compassion? I'm not resembling him. Who gave birth to me? Bro, who gave birth to you? Mommy, who gave birth to you? If we claim he gave birth to us, Let's check which part. That's why sometimes you will discover when a child is born. The, uh, any person who had visited, we start looking at the child to check the futures that the mother possessed or the father possessed that is found in a the child. They begin to look and check. Even when the child is still just a day old, they is looking at it. Ah, he look like the mother. Look at the nose now. Look at the ear now. Ah, look at the head. He look like the father. The father will say, no, no, he look like me. The mother will say, no, it's not like you, it's like me. So from day one, they are beginning to look, to check whether this woman didn't do a way match. He looked like you. We should look like him. Bro, sister, mommy, in compassion, in love. Let's show it. Let's show it. Let's beg God to help us so that we can have that attribute and show it. If we show it, ah, we'll be fulfilling the watchman ministry at such a time as this. I know you are blessed. You can come along with us at Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, Busabuji Road, every Tuesday by 5 p.m., Thursdays by 5 p.m., and Sundays by 8 a.m. Come along with us, and our God will do you good.